Hey. Hi. How's it going? Hmm. You don't have time to help us with this. You go get your shoes on and then we'll meet you in the truck. I don't know where my shoes are. Go find them. We live in a very small home. You can find them. I'll tell you. One kid. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, don't say uh, anything bad about me, okay? We won't. <laughs> This is the Prius grandfather. This is a true hybrid. My driver's hat? Yeah. Really? Should I wear this when we drive? That's what it's for. Oh, that That's is a why great idea. There. All right. It's the KYD Double Spare Club. That one's delicious. And the windows are big. This is impressive. Yeah, I love it. Bolts are big, these mud flaps are big. This is like turning into a hat episode. Every day I've got a different hat on. Any heat that's coming off of this pipeline so that the ground, if there's any frozen ground here, it doesn't melt. Fairbanks and it's a beautiful day. Today's yes. Monday. We re we got here on Saturday. Last night, pouring rain, torrential downpour. Michigan. Yes. The only thing I can think. Michigan yes. rain. Yes, Michigan okay? type rain. That happened from like six to eight. By ten thirty, the sun was up. Everything was fine. Blue yeah. skies. I know. I told Mark, I'm like, finally, there's no light coming through the. What is that? The sky. Skylight. Thing? Skylight. I said, but no fear. It'll be back around ten p.m. <laughs> That's right, and it was. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're gonna head out to KYD Insider Mitch and Melody's house because Yay. we had the Rock Tamers shipped to their house. Thank you. And plus you. they live here in Fairbanks, so they're gonna give us some they're inside scoop. share the knowledge. Yes, yes. and uh, so we're gonna have dinner with them. We're gonna hang out for a little bit. We've got the Discovery Riverboat tour that we're gonna go on. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we're gonna look at a car museum. And because there's no fireworks, because it doesn't get dark enough here, mm -hmm. which still just cracks me up. Yes. I can't wait to see what the planes do. Yeah, they're gonna so, do like a flyby. The flyovers, so. Anyhow, so we're glad you're here. There's probably, there's lots to do in Fairbanks. We just have to go find out what it is. So let's go, let's start. Let's do it. <laughs> now we gotta go out back. Okay. Okay. Got meat first. All right, we're here in Mitch's garage. Wait, was this the garage or was where you keep the- This is the garage. This is the garage. What do you call that? The shop. The shop. The shop is over there. This is the garage. I asked Mitch if he wanted to hold the camera and he said no. So I guess that means I'm gonna hold the camera and he's going to assemble the rock tamers. And I think that's all it takes is assembling. I think all we need is an Allen wrench, right? Yeah, and I saw- It's uh, looking. Let's have a conversation about these rock tamers. First of all, after I finally washed Grand Ginger and got all the dirt off the front, it was very disappointing to find out that there was a lot more damage that we sustained than I initially thought. In fact, I'm gonna show you, but I will warn you, this is fairly difficult to look at. There are some pretty big rock chips in here, in addition to just dozens of smaller chips. And you know, this is not gonna be that easy to repair. So when we were in Watson Lake, I got out of a rig and our neighbor at that particular RV park had rock tamers and I looked at it and I thought to myself, those things look awesome. But more importantly, it looked like they would really do the job. They cover up a big surface of area behind the bumper. So I reached out to Rock Tamers to see if we can do a review of the product and to compare what type of damage would occur on the rig before and after going home. They were all about it. And so they sent them out to me in Fairbanks. So let me show you what they look like on the truck. Okay, first of all, don't mind the rain. It does that a lot here. And second of all, these will run you about $270. And I did add them to the KYD Amazon page and there's a link down below. You saw Mitch and I put them on, so you know that we're impressed with the quality and the products that they use. But really, the bolts are big. These mud flaps are big, thick, and heavy. 
and I don't think they're gonna flap up, but I'm gonna have footage from the rig as I continue to provide information on these so you can see them actually work as we drive down the road. But I like the size of them. I like that they're adjustable here. They go in, out, these fold up and down. And I guess the most important thing is we haven't had any more rock chips since we put them on in Fairbanks. Okay, so are there some downsides? There's a couple downsides. These are the uh, backup sensors and I have another one right here. So really what I'd have to do is loosen this up, roll this down, cut it off and reattach if I wanted this sensor not to be blocked by the bar. I'm not gonna worry about that because I got the backup camera, but that is something to consider. The other thing is um, it goes on the hitch receiver right here and normally I take the hitch receiver off because the Hensley stinger is so big, but in this case, I'm just gonna have to leave them on. So that's a bit of a drawback, but that's specific to the Hensley. And by the way, a Hensley review is coming, I promise. Yes, I like the hitch. Yes, it eliminates sway, but it did take me a little bit longer to learn. So I'm just getting a little bit more footage so I can give you some helpful tips on how to hook up and install and that kind of stuff. So that is coming. But anyhow, these are great. And I'm gonna provide more information as we get back down the road, back into the lower 48. Uh, but we're not done in Fairbanks. So now, Mitch and Melody showed us the inside of their camper truck. What is this? Anyway, it's a uh, 10, 10 foot, ten, eight inches. 10 foot, eight, it's a Corsair Accela made Corsair in Canada. Corsair Accela made in Canada. Okay. Trish, come on over and get the tour here. <laughs> I wow. Love, I love this skylight. You cannot find a camper with a skylight like this. Well, it's a real skylight. It's not know, just it's light. Big. You get to actually see. And the windows are big. This is impressive. Yeah, I love it. On both sides, I mean, it's this whole deep area here. Wow. And then there's these closets and it goes all the way down. So you can use it for, you know, like a clothes hamper. Yes. And then there's, this tends to be where I camp out with my stuff. Nice. And another huge one right there. Well, in Ginger One, this, this was all we had. We didn't have that. Yeah, we put this, our, <laughs> we, I mean, when we're in here, we put the dish strainer right there. And yeah, I just feel like I have room for everything. Okay, we are at the pipeline and it's impressive to be here. There's all sorts of different places that you can pull off. I was asking Mitch how many places off the highway do they have like an area where you can come in and see it? A bunch. Don't quote me, but there's a bunch. <laughs> there are several places for you to come and see this magnificent engineering beauty. Bunch of them. But 300, over 300 miles is underground. Mm. And above ground is because of permafrost. And Mitch was mm. teaching us that it's on floaters. So if there's any change in the environment, say an earthquake or that, of course, oil might need to expand, mm -hmm. it can move. They back slide on this flexible. thing. It's like uh, Hot Wheels for oil. <laughs> <laughs> then they needed supports to raise up the pipeline to prevent it from heating up the ground. It's a new design for constructing to be part of the land so caribou can march under it and earthquakes can rock and sway it. Okay, so 77 was the first year that the oil was actually taken from Prudhoe Bay mm -hmm. and brought down over 800 miles down to Valdez where they take it in ships. At, at one point the pipeline was producing two million barrels of oil per day. And I was trying to kind of wrap my head around that. So I looked up online, how many barrels of oil does a tanker have? Two million. So it's essentially one day's worth of pumping goes into a single container. And yeah, this is a popular spot. There's all sorts of people. The tour bus just showed up and there's uh, a pig, which is a thing that goes through and it cleans the pipe. It's wor it's definitely worth coming out here and just check checking out because of the well, and engineering. A, it's like an engineering marvel, right? Yes, and there's a section of the pipeline that's here that Caleb kind of climbed through so you can really get a sense for how big it is. Yes. Which is really cool. <laughs> what 
what I like is cars that nobody else has. Uh huh. And you can't see every day. This car, 1899 Hurdle, takes you from bicycles to cars. It even has tilt steering. 90% <laughs> of electric cars were driven from the left rear seat. We had said, ma'am, do you drive? And you said, yes, I'd say, are you a back seat driver? Which wasn't derogatory, it meant do you drive an electric car? <laughs> and that's where that phrase originated. Yeah, the back seat driver. Top of the morning to you. We're here at the Fountainhead Antique Auto Museum. I have to say two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, this is the best $10 you will spend in Fairbanks. You have to come here, okay? That's wow. number one. Number two, I might have been born in the wrong era <laughs> because I am looking at not only these gorgeous cars, but it's like a fashion show, a timeline fashion show. There is more vintage clothing here in this building than any on one display mm -hmm. than anywhere else in the United States. Really? Yes, and there are six cars that are only one in the entire United States that are gonna be under this building. Wow. It is something else. And one of the coolest parts was seeing Caleb see an, the first electric car. He's like, wait a minute, that's not the first electric car. The Tesla's the first electric car. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything that you see in an automobile today originated from one of the cars that you can see right here. I don't even consider myself a car enthusiast. You are when you're in this building. You are when you come through the doors here. So we right. just thought we'd transport ourselves. Yes. And what do you think of the new hat, you. huh? Mm. Maybe is this the new Alaskan hat? <laughs> no. No. People of this era when it comes to the automobiles are true geniuses with the double spare. Last thing you want to do is get a flat and ruin your whole trip. Yeah. Found another one. Most of the people here are part of the double spare club, they're including fingers. me. Because they're, they're smart, they're smart people. Okay, the other thing you're gonna find is how gorgeous the colors are of these cars. And it's not just like a surface color, the colors have depth. They're they're rich. They're, deep. They're very rich. And we were talking, I was talking to Willie about the colors of the car. And I said, so is it when Henry Ford came around with the, the production car, that's when they started turning black? He goes, no, that was a myth. A salesperson for Ford said you could pick any color you want as long as it's black. Ford, start, Henry Ford started making cars in 1903. He started selling them in 1909. And then the production line occurred in 1913. Mm. He said they made red, green, gray, and black. Ooh. And the reason that everybody thinks that we're only black is because the black and white pictures make all the red and green and gray cars look black also. It totally makes sense. Doesn't it though? But I want a colorful car. Can they start bringing colorful cars back? How about a colorful refrigerator? I have pictures yeah. of my mom when she was little and the, and the refrigerators, the whole kitchen, like had a personality. I agree. Where's the personality? How about we just start making things that you're not supposed to just throw away? This hat is changing him. <laughs> <laughs> this is an exceptional place to visit, so be sure to add it to your list when you come through Fairbanks. But that's not all we're doing today. Now we are going to go grab a little bit of lunch, and we're heading over to the Riverboat Discovery. It's a three-hour tour on a paddle boat. So this is kind of like throwback Alaska in Fairbanks. Yes, a three-hour tour. That sounds... I like like so. yeah. yeah. And where would you like me to take you? Oh, I like this. Yes. yes. Lunch, please. Ah, I know just the spot. <laughs> These dogs are not eager to do this, isn't it? <laughs> Look at what happens though when he pulls the trigger. Everybody's gonna get right. real quiet. They lean right in, start picking up speed. David hangs on tight. It looks 17 year old Stango's going out there because. Each dog 
a pat on the head to say thank you. It's to play. Yeah. How's it going in there? In where? In the boat. You're in the boat. I'll shoot straight with you. When we first got to the boat and I saw all the people get on it, I said to Trish, are you sure you want to get on? Well, there were three tour buses, and as the tour buses were <clears throat> emptying and going straight into the boat, we were like, I don't know if we should do this. But then I got on the boat, and you know, I think it's the hat. I got into it. <laughs> it could, actually, you learn a lot. It's not the hat, it's the camera. It's the camera. We do get more out of the things we do because we are recording it. Mm -hmm. It's like that book that is in our um, library, The Power of 100% Engagement or Full Engagement. Yes. Well, it's a touristy thing, but you do learn a lot. You learn a lot and you see a lot of the beautiful things that are on the water's edge that you wouldn't get to see otherwise. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we are downtown Fairbanks, mm -hmm. and there's a cultural center right over here, visitor center. So we thought we'd visit that. Yes. And see, maybe we could get a quick bite to eat. Let's go into the visitor center to see what we can do for 4th of July. Yes, Because that's very we're important. trying to figure out what the heck happens here in the daylight of Fairbanks on 4th of July. <laughs> well, I have finally found a map that is truly representative of Alaska. <laughs> it's huge. Okay, right now we're in Fairbanks. And we're gonna make our way all the way down here, past Denali, here's Denali, into Talkeetna. And that is where we're gonna fly in and see the park. And then from there, we'll drop down into Anchorage and then do the peninsula, the Kenai Peninsula. Right through here. Homer. And then over to Homer, where's Homer? Homer's right here. Oh, Homer. And, and then, then we'll come Seward. back up here to Seward and then we'll go back to Anchorage. And, and then, then we'll come hit over to Valdez. Valdez. And then when we come out, we're hoping to hit a little Juno on our way out. Yeah. Or over here from Homer, right over here to Augustine Island. Well, that's like the Kodiak area, and it's the Katmai National Preserve, which is where all those grizzly bears the grizzlies are. Grizzlies hang out. This is where the grizzly bears roam. That's what we want to see. Hundreds and hundreds of them at a time in through here. Okay, we got a couple. The visitor centers are amazing. It's kind of like a, a, a city's concierge. Yeah. Don't like, you think? Can you go anywhere where you could just walk in and be like, can you find something to entertain me, please? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, totally. All right, I've got help. maps, I got addresses, I got yeah, brochures. Print offs. Brochures, what, what do you need? That's funny. So we got a couple restaurant recommendations, but the disappointing news is there really isn't a lot going on for 4th of July here. In years past, they used to have flyovers mm -hmm. because there is an Air Force base here. Yes. And so they would go over and make loud noise. Yeah. And, you know, it would substitute for fireworks yes. at some level. Yeah. But, but no, not, not this now. year. So there's something going on at Pioneer Park, which might be like, a little kitschy kind of yeah but we'll, we might go check it out we, we might. need to do something on fourth of july i'm definitely not sitting at home so we're getting through a little bit of a fourth of july dip so we're creating a turnaround plan okay. what do we need a turnaround plan for well this is the whole day when south hard the whole day has been going south hard all right so this is what we have decided to do come down here on the river's edge and have a drink and trish and i can have a conversation and sparkling orange water want some <laughs> yes and then have some wine yeah yeah so this is this is fourth of july let's just say this is a nice night <laughs> fourth of july puts too much pressure fourth of july it. is trisha's favorite holiday it really is and one thing being full time is you do need to plan in advance of how do you want to handle the holidays you really do. how do you want to handle thanksgiving how do you want to handle Christmas, 4th of July. The, the holidays that are important to you require tremendous foresight mm -hmm. in order to say, where are we gonna be? How are we gonna make it special? How do we make it, how do we connect with our friends? That type of stuff. It's been a good morning, and now we're headed down to possibly Denali National Park. We might actually pass Denali National Park and go to Talkeetna because it's supposed to rain Monday through Friday, and we might be going out with Alaskan Air, and tomorrow would be the best day to do that. So we might just do that and then see Denali from the air. We might go back. We don't know. 
But a couple things I wanted to mention is I just picked up these Husky containers at Home Depot yesterday. And the reason I'm excited is, unlike the other ones, these go up like this. You see that? And they stack on top of each other. So I got my sewer hoses in here, freshwater hoses here, and watch. They go below the top of the surface there. You see that? Super cool. And then the other thing I can update you on this morning is this stops working. It goes down, but it doesn't go up. Same thing happened on Ginger 1.0. So I probably need to, it's probably just a simple switch in there. It's been raining like every other day since we've gotten here. The crank's on the other side, so let's get started.